I just think Auburn's unique. I think it's not too big and it's not too small. I think it's unique in some of the traditions. You can't get to a Tiger Walk and go, wow, that was okay. It's unbelievable. But people make this community. And one of the things that my wife and I said way back when I was an assistant here back in 2002, no matter where we end up and no matter where we are at the point in time when our children become college age students, we want them to come to Auburn. So we're headed to one of your three restaurants, Louis Chicken Fingers. That's it. Let me ask you, why Chicken Fingers? Well, it was a restaurant that I bought off of a friend of mine, and I used to go there and eat a lot. I love the food, and I'm a foodie anyway. I love food. I wouldn't have bought these if the food wasn't good. Love food. Oh, love food. Favorite food. What oh, are you ordering cheese, when you go in what, these places? This is how simple I am. Cheeseburgers. I got to really look at somebody funny if they don't like a cheeseburger. <laughs> Professional cheeseburger maker, right? Cheeseburgers are, they're king. See? I thought it'd be cool to have a place that could serve people and, you know, bring joy to people. And I ended up opening another one on my own. Uh, and then I ended up buying a third one after that. Now, obviously, you go from coaching and now you're on the business side of things. Have you always been an investment type of guy? Have you always been a number cruncher? Always. So even when I was an assistant coach and had my first job almost 30 years ago, um, I was buying uh, condominiums in college towns and renting them out to students. Oh, wow. Um, that was in my 20s. And obviously, as you know, I kind of moved my way up, you move on to an Auburn and a Texas and then you become a head coach, you don't have a lot of time to do that. So then when I really stepped away from coaching and really said, okay, what, what do I want to do now? I, w I wanted to put the time I had in coaching into something else and, you know, for my family. I'm very competitive. That's part of the football world that I miss. I like the competitive nature of the challenges of business. And it's no different than football. You're going to win some of them, you're going to lose some of them. And in the business world, you just hope you don't lose too many you're going out of business. Just like in the coaching world, if you don't win, win enough, they're going to fire you. So that's the way it works. So this is the control room where Gene Chiswick's game plan of life goes down. You pretty much spend most of your days in here, right? A lot of time in here. This is kind of a 30 years worth of a lot of stuff. But it's also very functional too, because this is actually where I do all my work, whether it's breaking down film and getting ready for TV broadcasts, uh, or actually preparing for speeches on you know, speaking tour. What's that been like for you, getting to be on the other side of it, breaking down film as an analyst versus as a coach? I, I love it, Lauren, I really do. And just like you love it, it's fun. Now, Texas Tech has been down in the red zone. We talked about how important it was for them to be able to score touchdowns when they get down there. I love being able to verbalize to people what I see through my set of lenses. That part has been really, really fulfilling for me. And I, I really love it to the point where I could see myself doing it for a long time. There's a championship ring sitting in this room. Take me back to 2010. What do you remember most about that season? I just remember what an unbelievable team, uh, team. And, and I don't mean team from the sense that we won it all. You know, Lauren, people don't realize we didn't have a lot of NFL players on that team. We had probably the best offensive player in the country, the best defensive player in the country, and then we had a lot of good college players. You know, when we went into the season, we didn't know what we were going to have. We, you know, we knew Cam Newton was going to be a quarterback, but we didn't know what that looked like. You don't know what that looks like till the lights come on and you start playing games. Auburn wins the BCS National Championship. Today, I can tell you this, we're the best football team in the United States of America and War Eagle. When you raise the crystal ball, and you can literally say that nobody in the United States of America is better than you, for me to really even describe that, I'd probably cheapen it, because there's really, it's, it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to describe.
if you can pinpoint an area or one of the single most things that is difficult about being a coach, when somebody enters into that coaching world, what do they have to be prepared for? Well, I think really everything goes back to that's the profession you decided and there's a lot of good in it. But when the negative stuff starts coming, your wife and your children didn't sign up for that. And that's really, really difficult. I know how to handle that and I know I have to handle that. Your nine-year-old when he goes to school doesn't know that. And your 13-year-old daughter when she goes to school, she doesn't know how to cope and handle those, those things. That was the toughest part for me was when things aren't going well, of being able to insulate them from the negativity out there because everybody has a voice now, Lauren. You know that. Everybody's got a voice. If you got a computer, you got a voice. And that trickles down to your wife and your kids. Every decision I make in my entire life, Lauren, is based on my family. For me to go to the University of North Carolina and coach for two years, I enjoyed every bit of it. But at the end of the day, I didn't want to move my family out of Auburn. My son still goes to high school here. At the time, my daughters were still at high school here. You know, when we came back to Auburn the second time around, we promised our kids that they would graduate from Auburn High School because my kids could tell you where they were born. They couldn't tell you where they were from wow. because we moved so much. I just felt like the family decision was the most important decision by far. Nothing more, nothing less. I still love football. I've got a passion for it. It's provided me just unbelievable opportunities in my lifetime that I don't take for granted. And I love the game. What would it take for you to go back into coaching? It would just have to be the perfect fit. And it'd have to be after I've completed the, my son's senior year of high school and been able to see every football game and every baseball game. And I can't lie, I'm having a blast doing exactly what I'm doing. But I do love ball. And I, I do love the coaching part. And I do feel like I still have a lot of influence I can give to, to young guys. What matters to me is me being able to look back on the thousands of guys over 30 years of doing this, thousands, that you can look back and say, I made a difference to some of these dudes. There's no question in my mind between my wife and myself, we've done that with a lot of guys. Alabama Beautiful by putting the brakes on litter.